So here we go. Determining low light settings and optimizing your shutter speed. So this is, this is where manual exposure becomes a little easier because you're not going to have as many variables as you think. You think you're going to be like spinning dials and you're not because remember I, to I told you you're going to be determining what ISO you're comfortable with as far as your ceiling, like your highest ISO you want to use for acceptable grain. Well, walking in there, you're already going to know what it is. So every time you like walk into a room, it's like, ooh, dark room, you're, you're already going to know ISO 1000, you know, or ISO 800. You're going to know what your cam camera is capable of. For you right now, it might be 500, but 400, yeah. <laughs> so you're going to know walking into that room like, oops, dark room, 400, you know, keep going. You're not going to think, oh, like I have all these little spinner things going this way, oh, ISO. You're already going to know where your ISO is going to go. Now, the next thing to do would be to pick your aperture because aperture is more important than shutter speed and your shutter speed is almost going to fall into place once you pick your aperture so look at your aperture now how do you pick your aperture if you have a 1.4 lens sure you could put it on 1.4 and just go walking around blazing pictures but everything's not going to be in focus you're going to have this really small plane of focus to work with and you might be just snapping pictures all day and yeah, they look good on your LCD screen that's this big, but when you get home, that 1.4 won't be sharp where you need it to be sharp. So if, if that mom just grabbed her kid in the picture, then yeah, mom might be in focus because you focused on her, but then the kid will be blurry because you have this really small plane of focus. So you have to make a decision, what aperture I'm, am I going to use where I'm going to not shut off all the light in this room, but I'll have enough in focus so I don't have to worry about that mother grabbing her child and I'm not going to go around shooting at 1.4 because, I mean, doing that would just, you know, 1.4 is great, but in doses, you know, you, you saw that first picture I showed you in aperture mode. I mean, how useful would that be in a room, let's say a room at low lighting? You still want to show what's going on in the room. You don't want to isolate every subject so that every person is, you know, the only thing in that picture. You want to show what's going on in that picture to some extent. So you would pick your aperture. So this is something you're going to have in your head already. You're going to say, well, I need at least this much in focus, but I don't want to go to F8 because then I'm losing all my background. So, um, you know, for me, I pick usually F4, 5, or F5 because I know that'll keep some of my room lighting. So there, you've already got two of your numbers there. You know, we talk about constants and variables in algebra. You've already picked two of them. So the only thing left is your shutter speed at that point. And from the numbers we looked at, it's probably going to be in that range from 25th of a second up to 50th of a second. Now, you can play around with different speeds and see what works. I mean, some people can handhold 15th of a second. If I have my camera on a monopod like this, I can shoot a 15th of a second, but I'll probably still tell my subjects to stay still. You know, if, if people are moving around and jumping, 15th of a second won't work. So then you're going to have to pick another speed, but your speed is picked according to your subjects. If you're just going to have people seated in chairs, you know, like posing, then you could probably get away with 15th of a second. So. But if so, you're shooting like a monster or something like that, You'll have to go higher, but that's where you're going to probably up your ISO. Um, when we get into shooting concerts, that's a little different because are you going to be using flash or no flash? No flash. Then, I mean, at that point, we get to your optimizing your shutter speed. So you can get to this and you can re ask yourself these questions. So let's go through this as if we're going to shoot a concert. So determining, like saying, optimizing shutter speed. So determine the highest ISO you're willing to use. You know, and now this might be different. This answer will be different than your other one. If you're shooting a wedding, you might say a thousand. But if you're shooting that picture I showed you with the guy in the band, then you say, oh, all bets are off. They don't care about noise. They just want sharp pictures. So then you might go up to 2,000, 3,000, whatever your camera can do. So now your answer is a little different. So we go through this, and now we pick, let's say, 1,600, because that's the highs you have. Now, 
Determine your aperture considering the following factors. How shallow can your depth of field be? And keep everything you want in focus. Now, you can ignore the other part about the ambient lighting because you're not using a flash. So there's not really ambient lighting when you move into flash. There's just lighting because you're just going to be using that room light. So ask yourself the first question. How shallow can your depth of field be? Keep everything you want in focus. Well, if you just want the singer, at this point, you're just going to take what you can get. So you just want the singer. So the answer to this question is as low as your camera will go, which on yours might be f3.5, or if you have a 1.4 lens, it's 1.4. So this answer is whatever your camera will go down to. So, so you're, you're noticing we're answering, when it comes to low light photography, we're just, we're just flipping every switch up to high on this one. We're saying, give me all your ISO, give me your widest aperture, and give me the longest shutter speed I can get and get away with it. So at this point though, you can shoot this on, you're gonna shoot this on aperture because we're almost gonna be going to the mentality of enough light because we're just gonna just optimize everything and then just shoot it whatever the camera will give us because we're not gonna be shooting manual on this because we only have one part to the exposure. We're gonna optimize and shoot an aperture and then we're gonna cross our fingers and hope that that speed is fast enough. So let's say I just, you know, I blast everything on high, like high size ISO, shallow is aperture, and I go like, look at the shutter speed, and it's at 30th of a second. Then it's like thumbs up, I can work with that. 30th of a second, you get yourself a monopod, and you sit yourself out of the way so you're not in the mosh pit, and you just fire away. And you take a bunch of pictures, some will be in focus, some won't, but the ones that are in focus will be good. You just learn your timing with the guy singing. You know, if you see him walking up to the mic, you don't take it then, you take it when he already, you know, opens up his mouth. So that's where you just learn timing and you learn how to make your shutter speed work with you. So if you look down, you see 200th of a second or 300th of a second, then you just, that's like finding money on the ground, you know? You're like, damn, I can, I can play with stuff. So let me turn my ISO down a little, take a little grain away and you know maybe I don't want 1.4 so I'll go to f2 and then you know life is almost too easy because you can just fire away so it just depends on what you see that final number is once you optimize everything if it's too fast then you can start pulling back the horses a little bit if it's too slow then you, you look across the street and you, you see there's a camera story like maybe I can go buy 2.8 2.8 lens real quick and you know, see what happens. So, does that answer your question?